Cool. Uh, well, hi, my name is Jaris. I'm here to talk about status, a uh, mobile light client that connects uh, directly to the Ethereum <coughs> network and strives to be something like a uh, mist for mobile. Um, show of hands, you've actually heard of status? Oh, wow. Great. Fantastic. Um, well, what you might not know is uh, status is also uh, more than just a mist for mobile. Uh, we're actually trying to be a strategy towards mass adoption. Uh, and today I'll just talk about what to uh, expect from us this year. Uh, before I do, who are we? Uh, we're a team of eight. Uh, we're spread out from, uh, across the world, mostly Eurocentric. Uh, Carl, my co-founder, and I have actually been in business for about five years. Uh, we had a background in software distribution. Uh, in our previous business, uh, using our own capital, uh, we grew our distribution network to over 20 million users in three years. Uh, and the profits of that we used to fund and sustain status development since then. Uh, why do I mention that? Well, uh, because we actually seen firsthand how your data is bought and sold, and how your digital life can actually tell an actor pretty much anything you, uh, they want to know about you, and that's uh, deeply concerning for us. Uh, which is why Ethereum and its related technologies such as Swarm and Whisper are so incredibly transformational. I mean, that's all very good for like you and I, we're the people who get it, uh, but what about everybody else? You know, the people you see on the street, on the subway, and at restaurants. How can we reach them? See, we initially uh, started out with that Mr. Mobile idea, a DAP browser that would connect directly to a Ethereum network and fit in your pocket. Uh, but there's a problem with that. The only people who would actually use that, uh, at least to start off with, are people who already know about it. We'd be essentially preaching to the converted. Uh, so our mind moved towards how can we bring Ethereum to a greater audience, what would user acquisition look like at scale, and how Ethereum can actually be part of our daily experience. Uh, we've thought a lot about the problem of mass adoption for cryptocurrencies, uh, and this is what we're currently thinking. So first up, where is everyone? Well, as of 2014, mobile internet usage just past desktop, uh, and more time is actually spent on smartphones than on desktop, and of course this continues to increase. In fact, in emerging markets, uh, people typically des uh, skip desktops entirely in favor of their smartphones. Uh, smartphones are literally the new personal computer, uh, and to make Ethereum accessible, we have to have a client on this. Um, I mean, so it's, it seems pretty obvious that if we want to attract the most people, that we do need to be on mobile. Uh, but then the question is, how are people actually using their mobile phones? Well, it turns out, in terms of monthly active users, uh, instant messages and social networks have three times the amount of users than browsers. Uh, a third of all that time that you actually spend on a smartphone is within an instant messenger. Uh, and even though this data is from the Chinese market, the pattern is uh, similar in the West. Uh, what this means is that the users tend to stick better to instant messengers and they, uh, they use these applications almost daily and they will continue to do so for months on end. Uh, if we want to maximize the surface area for making an Ethereum client accessible to people, uh, this is probably our best shot. So what if we could provide a compelling user experience, a familiar user interface that requires little to no knowledge of crypto or blockchains, an encrypted peer-to-peer -peer messenger that protects your communication. What if it's entirely free and we can use existing users to educate the market with full access to dApps, <coughs> to chatbots, and gently expose people to the wonderful world of decentralized applications and conversational crypto commerce? What if you as a dApp developer have just finished your new dApp and you can immediately get all the users you can handle from day one with little effort on your side? Uh, that's what we're really about. So where are we? Well, we had an alpha release at the beginning of the year uh, for Android and iOS. At the time, we were largely just testing the WISP protocol's viability. Uh, we had over 2,000 alpha testers on the first day. I personally spoke with 70 uh, people through status, uh, and the result of this is we've uh, discovered 50 new bugs. Right. Since then, uh, we've been speaking with DAP developers, uh, finding those who are on the Rockstan testnet, adding them as default context for users to try. Uh, we're striving to be fully compatible with Mist and MetaMask, uh, and that means for DAP developers, you can write once and run everywhere. Um, and contact me if you're on the testnet, I would love to add you. So, where are we going? Well, we set our roadmap that extends well into 2018. Uh, I want to show you what you can expect from us this year. Uh, we'll also be committing, well, trying to commit to a, a fortnightly release cycle. Um, and we're looking to have security audits and move to mainnet around Q3 of this year. 
Um, so one of the interesting challenges is how can we provide the same user experience that users already expect uh, when we have to accomplish this in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion? Uh, with status, we want to establish a gradient between convenience versus privacy, putting the user in control. Uh, we want to make the technical details always accessible, but kind of out of the way for the average user. Uh, one of the most notable, noticeable user experience issues is the lack of notifications, and currently requires both parties to be online to reliably send and receive messages. Uh, now, with the advent of uh, Whisper inboxing, uh, we can allow users to optionally store Whis uh, Whisper payloads offline on some other node in the network. Uh, and we're also extending this ability to provide push notifications. Status can optionally delegate a node to, to be a Whisper inbox, uh, and then it will tell its uh, clients that it's interested in talking to what that, what that node is. Uh, and then if it's capable of firing push notifications, they can offer that as well. Uh, currently, we're using Firebase for push notifications on iOS and Android. Um, hopefully, in the future, we can remove this entirely and leave an open connection to the node that's actually storing the messages. Uh, I'm a little doubtful that's going to work on iOS because Apple. <laughs> uh, another expectation from users is going to be the ability to send audio and image messages. Uh, the problem for us is the, the amount of data for this is just too large to send over Whisper. Uh, to remedy this, we're actually going to bring Swarm to status. Uh, message contact will be encrypted with the receiver's public key and uploaded to Swarm. Uh, we're actually talking about full Swarm support here, uh, directly on the device. Uh, so this also ena enables dApps hosted on the Swarm network, as you can see with uh, the chat over there. Um, I mean, hopefully you'll see this in the next two to three sprints. Um, currently, status is, uh, uh, sorry, currently users and status are referenced by their public key. Uh, we've now registered status im.f on the uh, wonderful Ethereum name service, and uh, we'll be using this system to register and resolve usernames to a public key, identity, or DAP URL. Uh, at the end of Q1, uh, we intend to open status uh, up to DAP developers. Uh, exposing our chat API, which will allow you to uh, create chat bombs, uh, custom keyboards, uh, or of course run normal web-based apps. Uh, we want to make developing for status as easy as possible, uh, and soon you'll uh, be able to simply plug in your phone, get immediate access to a Geth console, and watch real-time updates on your code hotload along to onto status. Uh, we also intend to bolster the Whisper encrypt, uh, encrypted messaging. Uh, we want to introduce, uh, introduce forward secrecy. Uh, we also want to do uh, physical sharing of pre-shared keys via QR codes. And uh, we also want to do messages that burn after reading. Uh, uh, we also uh, have plans to provide no-knowledge contact sharing, uh, which you can read more details about in the uh, wiki. Uh, in our next release, we're also providing like public group chats. Uh, unlike the encrypted group chats, these are more for permissionless co coordination and they behave more like a public channel. Um, the Light Client has actually been incredibly useful for running Ethereum and resource restricted devices. Uh, when we first started, we were crazy, we were syncing before blockchain. Um, anyway, uh, it does require syncing the entire blockchain headers. Uh, it only takes a few minutes, but, and you can still operate status without it being fully in sync. Um, however, we think we can do a little bit better from a user experience perspective. Uh, we can set a trusted canonical uh, hash tree, uh, which we plan to update with every release. I mean, what this end means for the end user is that syncing will use less bandwidth and will take under a minute to synchronize. In an ideal world, the CHT will actually be dynamic and, and done in a trustless manner, uh, but this is still under research. Uh, as our base foundation uh, starts to feel more stable, uh, we can start working on more exciting applications of status. Uh, we want to create a handful of dApps, which we believe are critical for bridging the gap for onboarding users into status. I mean, the most obvious one is Wallet. Uh, we'll be taking inspiration of the best user experiences we can find uh, in the mobile banking world. And in addition to this, of course, we're going to uh, provide full ERC20 compatibility, shapeshift integration, multi-seek wallets, budgeting features, uh, expenses, incomes, and market data, blah, 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 blah. Um, but I mean, as we start to expose users uh, to Ethereum, one of the inevitable questions we're going to get is how do I buy crypto tokens? Um, and of course, you can use an exchange or even Coinbase, and we do intend to, to integrate with those. Uh, but getting tokens 
in the physical world should be as easy as finding an ATM. Uh, and this is where the global teller network will come in. Now, uh, for anyone who's used it, you'll uh, notice we have a feature called Discover, and it allows you to prop uh, propagate a public status, giving you the ability to find dApps or uh, advertise goods and services through your social network. Um, we're actually going to be iterating this uh, idea to make it look more like a layer-based maps display um, and opening those layers up to third-party uh, distributed applications. Uh, one of the first layers is going to be the global teller network. And um, it will allow users to exchange fiat or physical assets for crypto tokens. Uh, it will also consist of a generalized uh, escrow smart contract and uh, an intermediation system that will op uh, operate entirely within the chat context. Uh, we'll also be introducing a community curated DAP directory and sticker market. Uh, the DAP directory was actually one of our most requested features. Um, I'm a little hesitant because this interface does uh, raise a number of problems, which you can see in the Google Play and App Store. Uh, it does act like a centralized choke point, uh, favoring whatever DAP is on the, on the front page. Uh, we're still trying to think about how to best solve these problems. Um, the sticker market is actually a really interesting one. Like, it might seem trivial uh, at first, but if you take the Line Messenger, for example, 25% uh, of the revenues uh, actually came from sticker sales, uh, generating over 270 million US dollars in revenue last year. Um, it's also an interesting uh, avenue for attaching a, a real-world meme economy. Um, so for developers, we'll in, uh, be introducing full support for Solidity and Viper programming languages. Uh, we also want to enable the ability to write smart contracts um, uh, for use among friends uh, within the chat context. Uh, I mean, the problem is coding on your phone kind of sucks. Uh, so we've been thinking about how this could potentially look like. Uh, our current thoughts are to create a Lego-like module uh, that clicked together. Uh, so we'll be reskinning Blockly and creating code generators for both Solidity and Viper. Uh, we'd also like to see a smart contract component market, uh, probably not this year. Uh, that developers could then create prefabricated blocks for other users to use. Um, of course, coding smart contracts is no trivial thing. Uh, so think of how we can create uh, and test reliable smart contracts will require a lot of force. Uh, identity is also one of the most exciting features uh, we, we want to see. Uh, it will allow DAP developers to create any number of financial tools and while being regulation compliant, as well as making it painless for a possible uh, I think it's possible for users to set up. I mean, Uport is the obvious uh, serious solution out there, and we're looking forward to working with them more closely to make this happen. Uh, what I would actually like to see is the creation of an identity standard, spe uh, standard specification, uh, something like ERC20. Uh, doing this would allow the end user to have a, a freedom in the choice of identity system they use. Uh, finally, I want to talk briefly about disintermediation. Uh, here at Status, we've gone to great lengths to connect directly to the network uh, to ensure the client isn't connecting to Ethereum via some trusted intermediary server. We want to eliminate the need for you to trust us, uh, so we're open source, and of course you can check out binaries that we distribute that way. But even so, ultimately, the client is still a gateway uh, to Ethereum, uh, and it's itself is a trusted intermediary. Uh, the choices we make could have a profound impact on how things develop. We're thinking about how we can decentralize and democratize status governance and what gets worked on. Uh, we're trying to work towards a community-driven development model. And one of the ways we're looking at doing this is incentivizing open source development by the creation of CommitF. It's a GitHub bounty bot. And it'll allow anyone to create a bounty for, for an any, uh, issue. It'll allow anyone to contribute F or ESC20 tokens to that bounty issue. Uh, and then the project maintainer will then award these bounties by uh, merging a pull request. Anyway, thank you for your time. I hope you're using uh, Stays by DEFCON 3 and enjoy your lunch. Yeah.